I'm opening the waiting room now. Uh, no, don't even bother. I actually ordered one. I didn't. Uh, uh. Okay. No problem. Mm. Okay. Who is the person? Okay, I don't see any. Okay, you guys need to do more marketing. You're not yeah. doing enough marketing at all. Because people want, they want stuff, but they're not doing enough marketing. You have to be, more, you have to be consistent and you have to have different ways. Mm. Because most people want me at least, you know, and then maybe by, because I'm on webinar now by, um, that list, you need to update it. Mm. Mm. No, no, to put more things so I can send it to Papa Francesco. More things there, what to find out. No, no, he does, he, he probably does, um, no, I'm free. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you're all welcome to this global international secondary school webinar. We will just wait for a few minutes to have more people join us. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is um, Abolaji Osimo. 
CEO of Global International Secondary School and College. So we we'll just wait a few minutes. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Please, our participants, please put your questions in the chat box. Once we start, we're going to start in a few minutes. Please put your questions in the chat box. I'll just um, start with introducing our, our panelists that are here with us um, so that we can, we can hear from them on what we're offering to students who are, in, who are joining us for secondary school from September. Welcome you once again to this uh, webinar for our uh, secondary for secondary school, uh, Global International College Secondary School. Um, we've had a series of webinars and it has been very um, interesting in the last two months. Of course, we've all found ourselves in the virtual um, environment, so we cannot have the open days to have parents and we cannot even go to the schools to meet with students, you know. Uh, Global International College is very particular and very passionate about education about, and about young people. I have been doing this for the last 21 years now. Of course, we started with a sixth form, and in 2012, we went and we started with a secondary school, and we've had um, our wonderful young people with us now for since then. And it was, it's been a, a great pleasure um, being able to mold young people from the age of 10, 11, and it's so it's important as well. And one of the things we're going to be talking about is transmitting from primary to secondary. It's, uh, it's been interesting to see how um, there's such a massive difference between primary school and secondary school when they come here. And one of the reasons why we wanted to hold this webinar, which gives us the opportunity to talk to parents, is also to say to them, if your child is coming from primary six into Global International College in September, there are certain things that you have to sort of start nurturing them and and, and preparing them because primary is very different from secondary. We're going to talk a bit about that uh, later because we're going to look at so many, um, you know, you look at the social, you look at the emotional, you look at uh, so many things that are different. I mean, secondary school looks like a big people's school when, when they come from primary because they've been used to being there since literally when they, when they left nursery. So it's a different ballgame. 
So that's why we just wanted to go through some of the issues and say what we do in global. So like I said, again, I would like to welcome you all that are joining us on this webinar, looking at what Global International Secondary School is offering parents. We are, of course, on, on online. We've been online since March, and it's been a very interesting experience. I hope one of our students, Keith, will join us so that he can talk about her experience as well. But we have some of our teachers who will be joining us, and they will also speak about their experience. Apart from that, we have uh, Mrs. Sergio Show. I hope she's around. She will talk to us. She's, uh, she's, um, one of the things that Global focuses on is to prepare children for the 21st century. Very, very important. We are looking at jobs that don't even exist. You know, we're looking at the future jobs. We're looking at the fourth industrial revolution, you know, and she has been working and partnering with Global to ensure that students have the required digital skills. All of a sudden, a lot of our young people found themselves at the age of 11, 12, having to understand Teams, understand the environment of the LP365 that we use all of a sudden. It just, you know, but the important thing is that a lot of them have been used to it. We've been doing virtual um, online for the last 10 years because we have some programs that are online, and that's the Canadian Ontario sector. Familiar with that environment? So it was not such a shock to move them. But what it's done now is that it's actually now uh, moved them totally into that space. Um, Damilola, please call Mrs. Sergio so she's trying to reach me. Thank you. So I would quickly go on, um, just to go on. First of all, I would like to introduce the panelists. Can I have the panelists? Yes. So like I said, uh, Joseph Ogoa, she can join us. She's a human, human resources. She has to pull out because her children have to go and get um, the COVID test because her children are in Ogun State. So her twins had to go and get the COVID test today. So I said, look, just stay with them. Uh, you know, we don't know how long it will take, you know. Um, Damilola, Mr. Sergio Show can't enter the meeting. Please, can you sort that out? Uh, Mr. Sergio Show, I will introduce her when she comes on board. She's trying to enter the meeting. So we're gonna have Damilola, who is our technical uh, person who, has, who is a registrar for Global International Secondary School and College, who has helped and he will tell us exactly what the journey has been as well. And then, of course, we have Muiwa, who is the secondary school coordinator for Global. He will tell us a bit about what he does, how he manages and ensures that all our young people are settled when they come in to Global. Uh, Mr. Chegumoro is the math instructor, and Ebu Oluwa Johnson is our English language teacher as well. So they're going to be talking to us. This, this is the panelist, and I think Peace will come up. Um, I will check if she comes up. She's our student. Um, uh, if they are able to connect her to also talk to us about our experience in global. Because really, sometimes it's really nice to hear from the horse's mouth, the people who are having the experience who are here with us. So it's not just what we say. So I'll quickly roll along and just share a few slides. Um, and please, please put your questions in the box as I'm talking, if there's anything you need to know, or anything that you want to ask us. Thank you so much. Please go on to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, so this is Global International College and Secondary School. So those are some of our very happy students there, you know, when, when we were not doing social distancing, when we were still in school. This is definitely pre-COVID, sometimes last year. So you can see their joyous smiles. They're really a happy bunch. We miss them so much. We miss them, you know. Please go on. Okay, so our vision, Global, is to be a leading institution, nurturing and empowering students to become driven and well-rounded transformational leaders. Nigeria needs leaders. Global that we are looking at is to ensure that we build leaders. And not just leaders, but transformational leaders who can go into the sphere of influence and make a difference. And that has to do with the morals. It has to be the, with the, the foundation, a biblical foundation where Christians go and also to ensure that they imbibe a lot of the values that we believe. The values that really we were all brought up with. I know that when I was growing up, there were so many values that had shaped my life today. And one of the reasons why I'm a lawyer by profession, but one of the reasons why I'm in education is that I, I desperately love children, that's one. 
And I really wanted to inculcate the same values that I was brought up on, both at home and even in the schools in those days. You know, so that's what we try and build. You know, those old school values are very critical. To provide a high quality, innovative learning experience built on Christian foundation in a technology driven um, environment, very, very important and safe environment. So when we're looking at COVID now, we are going to have our students coming in for the WIAC exam. So we're prepared for them. Please go on. This is a curriculum that we offer at um, Global. It's, uh, we offer the British and Nigerian curriculum. It will be interesting. You know, when our teachers are talking to note that, you know, students in primary six, I think at best they'll do maybe six or seven subjects. But by the time they transition to secondary school, you, you, can, you cannot imagine the, the overload, you know, and that's why it's good to prepare them. They're going from six to seven to about 18 subjects. The, unfortunately, the Nigerian cur curriculum is overloaded with too many subjects. And that's one of the challenges they are finding now that we're transitioning online. So, and so we have about 18 subjects that we have to teach in year seven. So you can automatically understand that that is for a young person that has not been really used to that rigor, coming to now face that kind of rigor is quite something. So we have that. And some parents prefer for them to do the Nigerian and British. We are able to do a hybrid beautifully without a problem because the only um, subjects they have to do when they get to year nine is math, English, and sciences. So we just do the British math, English, and sciences. And then, of course, we also do, because of the fact that we, most of the young people that live global, some stay back in Nigeria for Nigerian universities, but most have always joined us traditionally to travel abroad, traditionally. That's what um, we've always prepared students to do. And that means we have to look at different curriculums that we're doing. We have to look at different curriculums that we're doing. And one of the curriculums that we also do is the Ontario. A lot of parents are beginning to look at Canada as a um, point of destination for, them, for their children. And if that is a point of destination for your children, it's good to start preparing them early. So when they come to us and they join in year seven, parents really, we have an orientation. And we say, look, if, for example, your child was born in the U.S., for example, you really don't have any business. I mean, apart from the fact that you want your child to stay in Nigeria. A lot of people take their children to the U.S., have their children in the U.S. until Trump had changed the laws because they want them to be citizens. And when they're citizens, they get free education. So we always say to parents, wherever, you know, if because you went all the way to the U.S., you don't want to be now doing a Nigerian British curriculum after three years. After they do year seven, year eight, and then year nine, which is checkpoints, that's the point that they start taking the decision. So before they get to year 10, when the subject now decrease to about six, seven, or eight, they will take a decision then that, do I want to go to Canada? Do I want to go to the US? Do I want to go to Britain? Or do I want to stay in Nigeria? And that is where the curriculums now split. So a, a, parent, a, a parent can decide that, look, for example, what has happened now with COVID is that look at what WIAC is doing. Our students who are with us for Canadian Ontario have done their exam online. Our students who are going, who have done the IGCSEs, IGCSEs is going to grade them. And I keep saying to parents that you don't want to leave all your eggs in one basket. If you know, and parents must plan for their children from a very early age. If you know where your child is going, then plan for that child from year seven and say to us, this is where I want my child to go. So that's why we provide the various programs. So we have also the accredited American diploma. So if your child is an American, that it's interesting. I mean, should naturally think that the child should immediately at least start um, trying to understand that curriculum. If that child from year 10 starts to do the accredited diploma, understands the curriculum, it makes it easier when they get to university or they go and they do the high school here for the Canadian as well. We've had so many challenges with students who go and do WIAC, just with WIAC, and they go to Canada, they struggle. So that's why we have partnered with um, high schools in the UK, sorry, high schools in the US and in Canada. And we provide the, the curriculum online here and also the teaching. 
So it's a very important um, thing to know if your child is thinking about secondary school or thinking about coming to global. We are expansive. We have this curriculum. We taught them for a while. Our teachers are quite well experienced. Then, of course, we have, um, um, please go back. We have uh, SAS and TOEFL. We have robotics. Mrs. Uh, Show will talk about that. We try and inculcate the SDGs with the robotics as well. And vocational skills, we, we want to encourage a lot of that. Going forward, we want children to make sure they have skills, not just academic skills, not just academic skills. So we also have the Alpha Christian course that we do. Like I said, we're a Christian school, and we believe that the foundation of a child is so important. I was so pleased when one of my students who was here 15 years ago joined the platform that we are praying for Nigeria, and she called me and said, Ms. Buzume, you won't believe that I was in your school 15 years ago. Now I'm on your platform that you're praying for Nigeria. You know, and she got the taste of being to become, you know, to, to, to accept Christ into her life when she was in global. And she's a fully fledged Christian now, desperate and dying to pray for Nigeria. And that's what I mean. You know, it made me so happy because our vision was actualized right in front of me, transformation leaders. So she's so keen on looking at government, praying for government, being part of government, you know. So that's what global is about. That's what I stand for. You know, a reformist, a change agent. Please go on. Next slide. So blended learning. Now, we're in a space where a lot of parents will be saying to themselves, should I allow my child to come to school? This, that, you know, a lot of people don't know. It's only God knows that what will happen and God that protects us. So we know that in global, we will be looking at blended learning. And we've told our parents that, look, there's no hard and fast rule about anything. Whatever you're comfortable with. But what we know is that learning must continue. And learning can be virtual, and it can also be in school. So we don't, students don't have to come to in school for six or five days a week. It can be two or three days, and it can be um, um, times that is may, maybe not more than a few hours. Of course, they're coming back here because we have work, and they have to do practicals. You cannot do practicals online. You have to do practicals. So they're going to come here about all the um, uh, social, uh, sorry, the safety guidelines are in place for them. Their masks, we have the shields that we bought for them and all of that. So it's blended learning, really. If anybody, if any school is going to be true to themselves, they will know that it has to be blended learning come September until we have a vaccine. So that's what we sort of run in global. That's what we're looking at. So students are exposed to synchronous and asynchronous, which means that students can have video teaching when they are home, which is what we've been doing, or sometimes they can come to the class in a very social distancing environment with all their masks and everything on and they can come and take a couple of classes but they can also walk like uh, at home and do so much and we tested all of that you know please go on so it's the traditional mixing with the um with the uh traditional mixing with the the new so is the new and the traditional mixing together so it's interesting so of course, blended learning means you can do your work anyway. So sometimes even if some of our students who have traveled to the UK who are in the US can actually continue their classes. And that's what happened. And if there's any child that's joining us or you want, you know of anybody that is even in Kaduna, anywhere where they're not doing online, they can join Global Online. It doesn't have to be a physical space anymore. So we are admitting enrollment from all over Nigeria, all over the world, literally. So for people who want to learn the curriculum that we have. So we have a very um, uh, robust learning management system. Uh, Damilala will speak to that. I won't say he will speak to some of those things. And he will tell, he will tell you and some of the teachers will say what they benefited. Students have benefited from the online space. I think it's been quite interesting. And I think it was something that should have happened. You know, I'm very excited about it. And it's allowing a student to learn the effect, essential life skills like communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity. It's allowing them to do project-based learning. It's allowing them to collaborate together in that space. And that space is the 21st century space. That's where they're going to work. You know, so it's, it's such an interesting thing. Please, next slide. Okay, so what are the benefits of the global model for the secondary school, for the benefits of our listeners today? I mean, it's a rigorous, relevant, quality, accredited online curriculum. We have been able to put practically all our information online. We have extracurricular, and we also have the curricular 
online and our teachers have been able to interface with students. You hear a, a bit more about that, so I won't talk too much about that. You know, so of course we have certified subjects. The, the important thing, you know, parents, a lot of parents have, have, have experienced or experimented on so many things in the last few months. Some have even called teachers to say, well, yeah, come and teach my child and all of that. But you have to look at the totality of it, that a school environment is still the most important place that a child can go because of the emotional and the social, the interaction and all of that. And that happens online. So if you have a teacher that is teaching your student just one-on-one, -on -one, you don't get the best. You might get something that is cheaper, but she doesn't have that interaction. When we did a survey, one of the things that all the students told us one of the big things they said to us is that we want to interact with our teachers. We want to interact with our friends. So they're able to interact with their friends with the uh, learning platform we have. You know, and they're also able to see their teachers. So basically, it is, it is so good. You know, it's something that is worth looking at. And of course, they are also um, uh, they experience so many other apps that are there. They have learned so much being online. So school is about collaboration. School is about interaction. School is about um, learning together. When you go to a workplace, you're going to problem solve with your colleagues. You're going to be looking at um, uh, uh, solutions with your colleagues. Nobody goes into a workplace and starts working alone. Do you understand? So this platform allows them. So what I, what I just love to say to parents, I mean, I wish one day I would have a bigger... Uh, platform to be able to talk to parents that that online a lot of parents don't get still understand the value it's been so valuable it is the 21st century we're talking about digital native please go on so these are courses that we run i've talked about them i won't say too much so the lower and the upper secondary that's the and the learning platform we use is the dynamic one and of course for our sixth one we have international medical the canadian foundation the usa we also have the secondary school aspect which is year 10 and year 11 and year 12 sometimes. So the Ontario Secondary School is a year 12 and you can start it from year 10. The USA, you can start from year 10 to year 11 and 12. Of course, we have the A-levels and we have the UK Foundation. Please go on. So our digitalized content. So all our content is digitalized in this format and put online. So all our teachers have been so hardworking. They put everything, they have videos online. So everything the student needs is in one place. They can still have their textbook and use it, but all the notes are there. So all they have to do is to go every day for the topic, look through it, look at the PowerPoint, look at the examples, look at the videos, and it reinforces their learning. It's the best way to learn. This will not happen in Mortar and Brick. In Mortar and Brick, the best the teacher is going to do is stand in front of them, teach them. You understand? Yeah, the teacher cannot, so when they, sometimes when they finish lessons in the morning, say by one or two, the video drops into the platform. So they can go back when they're trying to do their homework to go and listen again to the video. When they don't understand something, they can quickly text the teacher. So the teacher is accessible to them really 24-7. It's not like that when they're in school. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. And they can look at the video, go and go over it again, go over it again, go over it again. We're going to also have videos for past questions where they will have past questions and they'll see the um, teachers um, uh, actually helping, helping to, to answer the questions, you know, that's after they've done the test. So for example, they do a test, they don't do so well, there's a video that the teacher will post there and say, look, go and see what I did. So 24-7 parents have access. 24-7 teachers, students have access. That is such a, a beautiful thing. Please go on. So we are accredited by Ministry of Education. When I was talking about parents, you know, when parents are not so sure, what should I do? What should... The important thing is that all has happened is that the class has just moved online. It is still a school. So parents must not miss out. Some of our parents, you know, a few of them were saying they were waiting for third time because they said, excuse me for crying out loud. We've already finished the thought and they've done exam. They did well. They are moving on. We cannot wait for government. We cannot wait for the, you know, the whole world has moved on. We are created by the Ministry of Education. We're a center for Cambridge. We're having exams for West Africa, uh, YX. We're also a center for the UK, Canada, and the USA exams that we're taking. And we now have an NCC accreditation as a center for online degrees. We added that again to what we're doing. So really the full, full ambit of what you want to do is basically at global. Please, next. So safety concerns, like I said, very important. We have the guidelines of Lagos State 
all over the school. We put the banners, we put all of the things. We had the wash basins, washing their hands. And of course, when they come in, because of the fact that they've been away from school, they've been under lockdown, we have to look at the emotional, you know, um, well-being of the child and make sure we're talking. Teachers are, yes, academic is important, but their well-being is more important, particularly when they're coming to year seven. They have to be made to feel comfortable. So they must know the guidelines, we'll talk to them, but they must not feel scared. And prayers is the most important. So of course, our fees, all of this has to come to a peak. So the fees are as follows uh, that is on the table. So, so for students coming into year seven, year seven, year eight, year nine, the fees per month is 80,000. Office secondary is 100. Degree uh, sixth form is 120. And that is per month, which is quite reasonable for all of the things. We are subscribing to the platform. We are paying for it for the student. It's a Microsoft platform. Um, when Damilala shows you, you see the extent of what we are delivering online. Next is. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to ask a uh, English teacher who has taught in primary school, who has been with us for a few years, to just talk to us a bit about transition. So for the parents who are here, for the students who are here, what do you look at? What's so important to look at when they're transitioning and coming to the secondary school? How do you prepare them? We have an orientation. We're looking at a two-week program for students who are in year seven who want to transit and come to a secondary school space. There are so many things that needs to be done. And because schools are not physically in the physical space, parents need to know that this is what has to be done. So Ebo, over to you. Ebo, Lu, are you there? Is Ebo there? Yes, I am. Ma. Okay, please go on with your slides. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I'll be talking about transition. And basically, when we talk about transition, according to Miriam Webster, uh, Miriam Webster Dictionary, it says trans transition indicates change. It's a kind of passage from one stage or subject or place to another. Now, um, basically, that's change. With adult individuals, we find ourselves, as we as adults, we find ourselves having to make mental, emotional, sometimes financial, you know, preparations whenever we have to transition. Maybe we're moving houses, we're um, changing jobs, we're relocating from one place to the other. However, when it comes to our own children, when, we, when it comes to little children of about 10 years old, we just bundle them and then we put them in a secondary school and expect them to pull through. Many people do not know, many parents, many primary schools, many secondary schools do not understand what, it, what, what transition is or, or, or is about. Maybe they do not understand enough what they're supposed to. Um, now, now, when we talk about transition, there's several things that goes on with children and there's several things that they expect that to um, you know, change from the primary to the secondary school. For instance, socially, socially speaking, they expect us to just change friends. So the same uh, people that were with them in the first class are not the same people that will be with them in the secondary school. Okay, they're just supposed to change that. Their subjects also change. And Mrs. Osime had already mentioned that in, in, in the secondary school, what's what courses we're taking, what program, very straightforward with them. And they're supposed to just move from primary school into the secondary school and like everything is fine, you know, with no preparations. That's where there is no preparation. Then the school culture is also different. With the primary school, the school culture is tended toward care. Um, the, the, the primary school is supposed to be another home for the, the primary school students. But with the secondary school, the culture is a little different. Yes, the truth is there is still a form or the other of care, but then the, the, the preparation is toward an achievement. It is more um, independence driven. And based on this, the schedule also changes. With, with the primary school, the schedule is different. Everybody does everything together. You go for break time together, sing together, dance together, and have the same lessons together. But with the secondary school, it's a lot different. You are expected to pick your own 
um, areas, the areas you think are best for you based on your preparations or how you have been guided by your parents or your background. So these kind of changes, that's not to talk about the teachers, you know, with the primary school, you know, a, a child is um, familiar with about three teachers taking less than 10 subjects. With the secondary school, they, almost every subject has a different teacher. So they have to get familiar with that as well. Now, talking about what are present times, they have to change all of a sudden from, you know, having classes where, physical classes where they see their teachers to a totally different um, way of learning. That's the virtual learning. So there's so much for a child to just, um, take in, you know, without proper preparation, number of adjustments, they make these adjustments easily within the first few weeks of assumption that we're assuming in a secondary school. For many, some other students, a good percentage of students do not even get adjusted even up to secondary school. Personally, I didn't get adjusted into um, secondary school very, very easily. For some reason, I found myself in boarding house and uh, I was just supposed to, everything was just supposed to be fine. On the first morning, my first morning of being in a secondary school, before it was six o'clock that morning, six o'clock a.m., I had been I had been bitten twice. One of the things that uh, one of the people that beat me with uh, beat me with used was a twenty-inch metal pole. You know, so thank God it's not like that these days. There's so many things that happens, and if we, if a child is able to transition very well, successfully, emotionally, psychologically, physically, all around. From primary school to secondary school, there's a lot that can be changed. There's a lot that can be, you know, put in sync and in tune for their proper secondary school experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was just saying sorry to you. I was curious. <laughs> And you see, the thing about it is now that you're a teacher, you know, what you go through in school that was not right, you make sure it never happens. I remember I also had a rough time sometimes going from, because I was very big, going from primary school to secondary school, you know, I was on the big side and I got bullied a lot, you know, and that stayed with me, stayed with me for a long time. And a lot of people don't understand that what goes on in primary school, in secondary school stays with children. You know, and sometimes they affect and sometimes they're able to overcome it. So that's why I always say to teachers that remember, there are teachers who, who you will not be here today if not for a teacher who is in your life. But look at the teacher that was, has positively impacted you and make sure that because that person has positively impacted you, you are here today because of that. Then be that teacher. Whatever they did to you, you must make sure you do the opposite. I remember in those days, they would beat us black and blue. But now that's not the way to engage um, a lot of parents who come to global. This is you must beat my child. You must beat my child. I said, number one, Lagos State is an offense. You cannot beat a child. But if you look back when you were growing up, was it the beating that you really, yeah, of course the beating will, will, will put your head square. But then well, how about the counseling? How about the word of God? How about talking to a child? How about sitting with a child? And that's what we've done in global. We've had it, it's been so effective. So it's not about the beating and putting the cane and all of that, but talking to them. So um, I would like to go on quickly. And um, I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Ted Joshua, are you around? Thank you so much for that, Ebon. That was fantastic. Um, Mrs. Ted Joshua, are you around? Is Mrs. Ted Joshua around? Hmm? Yes, she's on. Oh, yeah, you're on. Please, yes, can you share with us um, quickly before we go on to look at what uh, Dami is going to share with us and then get our teachers to also contribute to the conversation quickly. Can you share with us in terms of the fourth industrial revolution? You know, a lot of people are looking at how do we prepare our children? Our children are digital natives. Our children are going into uh, uh, into a, a work space that is so different from where we are coming from. You know, how do we ensure, because they were born with the, the laptop or iPad in their hands, literally. So how do we prepare our children to be ready for the 21st century? 
And what is it that you're doing with global? Are you there? Because I can't see your face. Mr. Sajjason, okay, you're there. I can see you now. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm there now. You're welcome. So if you yes, can so yourself a bit and tell us about what you do and just, you know, talk to us about what is going on in this space. You can just talk to us about it for our parents and for our participants that are here with us to see what okay. you're doing, you know, in the space of the secondary school. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mrs. Dede Tejosho, the founder of Wi-Fi Combat Academy. And um, what we do is that we prepare the children for the 21st century workforce. We all know that um, things have changed because of the digital economy. The digital economy has brought in a lot of changes within the market space. We're looking at different industries like, like transportation, you're looking at the health sector, you're looking at um, manufacturing, you're looking at architecture. All these industries have been disrupted through the digital economy. And the question that we have to ask ourselves, are our children ready for that future? So that's, so we have to ask ourselves that question. So I don't know, can I share my slide please? Okay, you can share, yeah. Okay, I can share. Yes. The right, yeah. Not too many though. Okay. Okay, sorry. Um, yes. So as I was saying, things have really changed within um, within the system. In the past, I like to talk a bit about the past. We 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 lived some few decades ago. We were living the we were living in the in the <clears throat> knowledge economy, and um, the only place that knowledge was scarce and the educational systems then were preparing us for white collar jobs. And the content then was valued. And the skills then, once you went to universities, you had to learn the skills on the job. <clears throat> but now that the digital economy has come, it has disrupted a lot of things. As I said, it's disrupted so many sectors within the market, but I will not go there. So we're now beginning to see that knowledge has become obsolete and there's a need for reskilling. Content can no longer be valued in the workplace. And what we're looking at, the value now, we're looking at innovation. And now there's a demand for creativity and innovation. We're seeing now that for you to work in organizations like Google, Apple, skills are not required, but the reality is that, sorry, degrees are not really required, but the reality is that skills is needed. So it's important that um, we now begin to change a lot of things. So we need to look at how we can train our children to be very, very innovative. Working in the teacher economy will no more be based on knowledge work, but more of what you can do. Because why? Because we're seeing that most jobs are becoming routine and they can be replaced by technology. So we need creative problem solvers. So as I said, the traditional learning um, then, if you look at the first century curriculum, this traditional learning was focusing on the first industrial revolution. And it was based on standardized tests and solving real problems and emphasis of content re retention and not life skills. But we're beginning to see that the, the educational model needs to change and it needs to reflect new learnings for the fourth industrial revolution. Education needs to reflect the one side, we, it needs to reflect um, customer, customer, customer orientation education. So the one side fits all in education will not work. So we need to shift from traditional learning to more of like alternative learning. And we need to prepare children to be able to be innovators to solve the global problems within communities. And um, it requires a new way, as I said, it requires a new way of thinking. So how do we prepare our children for that generation? This will involve, this will be involved this will involve training the next generation on emerging technology, digital competencies. 21st century students must learn how to approach problems, creativity, collaboration, communication, and leveraging critical thinkers, thinking. Educators will need to move towards facilitating these young people in order for them to be able to develop the skills. 
So I put this slide, it's called disruption. And we see, we see um, these famous um, disruptors of the world. They're the ones that change the whole world. We have um, Elon Musk, we have Larry Page from Google, we have um, the late um, um, Steve Jobs, and we have Microsoft. So what made them disruptors? I've done, I've read um, about Microsoft, I read about Steve Jobs, I haven't really read about Google, but what, when I read what I read, I found out that they're learning, they're learning. Okay, like for instance now, Microsoft, that's um, um, the Bill Gates. Bill Gates didn't go to a regular school. He went to a school where they were able to work on his talents. So he started learning how to use the computer whilst he was five. He, he went to clubs, he learned a lot. And I found out that all these people had something in, in common. They didn't do the traditional way of learning. Things were different. And one of the things that they were able to, what made them stand out was that they were curious, they learned about their world, they were innovative, they had um, collaborative skills. If you look at them, um, all of them have partners, all of them. Steve, um, um, Steve, his partner is Steve Rosnick. So they were passionate, they developed multiple skills, they had resilience and risk taking. So these are the qualities that our children need and the schools need to begin to develop that in order for us to be able to give them the right skills for the 21st century. We're looking at um, the educational, there, has been, there, is a, there is now an educational shift, so alternative learning. As I said, we're approaching problem solving, um, cultivating and exp exploiting, exploring creativity, engaging in complex communications, leveraging critical thinking. So the, I'm gonna give you an example. Elon Musk decided to do something very different. He, he opened a school for, for children who will be able to offer new innovation for the 21st century. And one thing that drives him, he said, offers a passion-driven learning environment, a place where we're looking at no grade levels, an emergence of tech forecast curriculum, no mandatory classes, no grades given to kids. That's his own structure. Every school has their own structure. But what I'm saying is that our emphasis now shouldn't just be about children passing ICGSC. We should have like testimonies that, okay, when our children, <clears throat> when our children leave, what are they living with apart from just having ICGSC results? They should live with having a worldview of thinking. They should be able to, you know, begin to cultivate think and um, entrepreneurship. They should be able to cultivate things on, um, on understanding social development goals and looking at compassion. So these are the things that universities are looking for. These are the things that organizations are looking for. They're going to ask, what beyond your certificates, what have you done? So schools need to now begin to create things, you know, create programs that reflect that. When we're looking at the curriculum, it cannot be one size fits all. You have to look at how um, these children can develop their passion. What, how are they passionate and what can we do to be able to bring this passion? So for Elimos, he's for emphasizing more on skills than diplomas. So they're trying to discover the passion of children. They're trying to pursue personal goals for the children because children should have personal goals. They should be able to develop essential skills to build their passion. They should be able to work on projects. I, I, where, right, right now in our organization, Wi-Fi Combat Academy, we have this um, wedding. We just recently launched the Wi-Fi Combat Fellow Fellowship. It's a program. And students have attended most of our programs. They come in and they begin to write their business plans and they begin to launch their ideas through tech startups. And what we did was that we got people from different industries, organization, organizations like Andela, former employees of Andela, they come, they teach them frameworks and they're doing this. And this is how we're developing their passion. And I tell them, I say, look, not everybody can be a coder. Some of you here are designers, some of you are here are thinkers, some of you can bring teams together. So these are things that we're doing. So this kids from, so we had three young Nigerian Americans that um, decided to do their internship at our program. And what surprised me was one of our guys, he was saying, oh, I'm busy, I'm having exams. And I asked one of the boys, uh, tell them what's the criteria for entering an American university? He said, look, that it's gone, it goes beyond just having your ICGSE results. You need to do other things. You need to 
be passionate about your community. You should be able to have like solve the little problems within the tiny communities that you're doing. And I asked each and every one of them that what projects have you done? What how have you been able to influence your communities? And one was able, one talked about he launched an app and he won an award. Another one who's into medicine, wants to study medicine. He was able to, he's working on um, DNA. He's, he's working on new technology. You know, so the thing is that we have to go beyond just our children having degrees. And if you look at organizations like Finland, Finland has one of the best educational systems in STEM, in, sorry, in the world. They're putting out, they're looking at STEM problem solving. They also have the, the, school, the school's young entrepreneurship program. You're also looking at um, organizations like, um, sorry, countries like in Zuzinia, you know, where they're now looking at how, they're looking at global sustainable development goals. What can they do to help, um, to help address issues within the world? So those are the kind of things, those are the kind of curriculums that we need for our children to have. So education has gone beyond just the diplomas, it's gone beyond the degrees. It's all about how can we create impacts? How can we be, how can we create impact? What are the problems that we're seeing in our society? I will tell you that, that we have over, you know, every, we have over 50 million young youths in Nigeria that are unemployed. But when you now look at the job market, they said 60% of jobs will come from the agricultural sector. And you look at the value chain of agriculture, it's great, it's, it's so wide. And by the time we are putting technology into what you want to do, recently my organization was nominated by Forbes as one of the, one of the best, well, top 100 startups in Nigeria. And we had this training. And I noticed that all the people that were there, I felt funny because all the people that we had, they were young guys. They were in their 20s, their 30s. They came up with fantastic ideas. There was someone who was cleaning. He, there was someone that had that went to the informal sector and what he used was that he used technology to bring that service out. He uses nanotechnology to wash tanks across the across Nigeria. So look at that. We need our children to start thinking different. So that's uh, my slide. So I think for I think for organizations, I think the approach for organizations or for schools is that they have to now begin to look at putting extra, extra, changing the curriculum, start thinking about problem solving, start thinking about project-based learning, not just the academics. It has to be, it has to be a mix. The academics, project-based learning, um, thinking about global solutions. And I know that um, Global International School, I'm very proud of the school because they're working towards it. It's a journey and um, we're beginning to see students are, are exploiting these things. We had a student here, Oname, who for over the years has been doing a lot of several things and is representing Global International College. He's been everywhere, having YouTube, you know, rather than our children wasting time on social media, train them to do things because content is one of the biggest things that, that, that they need. Do you know what I'm saying? So imagine your children showing their passion using Instagram, YouTube. It will, change, it will definitely change the way things are done. And they will see, they don't have to come up from from universities and they don't have the job. They've already started that. They've already started the they've already started doing things. So we should we shouldn't wait for our children to think that jobs will be there. No. They're the ones that will create the jobs. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's so good. That's so great. You know, so and I, I always when we have our webinars, I always like to have um um uh, Sister Joshua come and speak to us because I've known her for quite a while and, and I think what, what um, the way to go in education now is to look at preparing children for jobs that don't even exist. A lot of Nigerian students are coming out of universities unemployable. We have a very high unemployed um, uh, population of young people, so sad. Unfortunately, even now, the public universities are not even online. You know, they're not even online. So our university students have been sitting at home for the last four or five months. Where? North three students are online. Can you imagine? North three students are online, and Nigerian university students are not online in the public university. It is so sad. Which tells you that even in our own generation, because we are analog, 
and we didn't have a digital literacy um, education, we cannot deny our children. No, everybody knows the way things are going. This is not the first epidemic. We had Ebola. We don't know what's going to go on, but everything is going towards the fourth industrial revolution. And people are getting jobs remotely. Nigerians are getting jobs in Silicon Valley from Nigeria. You don't even have to leave Nigeria to get a job if you have the right skills. Nobody wants to know what you are doing, so long as you can deliver the material for them. You can create a website, you can code, you can develop an app that will solve a solution, give them a problem, and you, even if you don't get a visa. And that's my, that's my, that's my sign on to parents now. Let us look at education in a holistic manner. It is integrating STEM. And that's what we're talking about. You know, the science, engineering, technology, math, and art. It's integrating, and that's what we're doing at Global. So when they have the extracurricular, they, we had, we had, in fact, we were scheduled to do our STEM competition this year. But unfortunately for COVID, we couldn't carry it out. So we've done it every single year. So that's why they're so, um, they're, the virtual environment has been part of them. And we intentionally do this because we know that that's what the market is dictating. So thank you so much, Mrs. Tejoshu, for that. Now, going on, we wanted to also look at, you know, this transition from primary school again to secondary school a bit more. You know, one of the important things is that, you know, the well-being of the students and their learning must be maintained when they transit from uh, primary. We have spoken about that. When they transit from primary to secondary school, their well-being and learning must be maintained. But this sometimes is hampered because of so many different re reasons. And I said social, psychological, emotional uh, reasons. I had, a, I had a situation once, because I, I go into the classroom. I had a situation once, you know, and um, there was a young student who didn't do well. And her, and her mom had said, oh, she, she was so good in primary school. So I said, I need to know what went wrong. And I checked the situation. I realized there were certain fundamental things that she should have been taught in primary school. She wasn't taught. And that's why she didn't do well in that particular test we did at the beginning of the year. And it was shocking to think that a child would have left the primary school, come to a secondary school without this fundamental, most important knowledge. Children join secondary school, they don't know how their multiplication time table. So many things. Some parents skip primary six. Primary six is in the syllabus. Once you skip primary six, you are given the secondary school a problem because a whole year's curriculum has been cut out. So we now find this young person who is 10 year old or even sometimes nine year old, they'll come into the space of the secondary school and they're struggling. Apart from the maturity aspect, they don't have the knowledge that we're going to build on. Secondary schools have to build on the knowledge. So I just want to call on one of our teachers, Mr. Shegun, can you tell us ex exactly what we look at? Um, if you can put the slides up again quickly in terms of transiting for their social, emotional, psychological well-being. How do we look at that in Global International College? Please, can you run the slides properly so I can speak to that quickly? A few minutes, please. Thank you. All right, my good afternoon, Mark. Thank you, everyone. Um, firstly, we, we need to look at um, what are the elements that constitute a positive transition from primary to secondary. And um, one of it is um, how to develop and improve self-esteem because many of them, when they you know, um, leave primary to enter secondary school, you know, they are moving into a new environment entirely. You know, maybe they have been used to some certain um, numbers of friends around them, but now they are learning to move into a new environment of, um, of learning, you know. So how do we ensure that this self-esteem is, is maintained and also developed, you know, is to also, um, one of the ways to do that is to also see how they can get themselves familiarized first with the school environment that they're coming to. Now that it is even virtual, okay, one of the things to do is to, you know, look at or take a tour of the school they are, they are going into, okay, and also see how they can familiarize themselves with the teachers, you know, the curriculum, the technology that has been applied, you know, in terms of their learning. So these are the things that, that is needed, you know, for, for, for maintaining a good self-esteem 
Okay, then the, the, the second part is settling into school life in a way that costs no concern. Okay, then showing increased interest in school and school work because now the, the school work now has, has, um, has been heightened in terms of work, you know, ethic, you know, the curriculum aspect and the scheme of work. Okay, so all of these things, they, they, they have to see, you know, the importance of why they are transiting into, you know, into secondary school also to help them also develop, you know, their, their skills, their ideas, what they need to know. Okay. Now also adapting to new routine with ease because, because there are some routine that will be involved into, into um, proper trans, transition into secondary school. Okay. Like w w when it comes to um, um, adaptive learning, okay, or independence learning. Okay. Now that it, it is, you know, the COVID period, you know, student needs more time to actually spend time, okay, learning, um, you know, most of what they're going to be taught online, okay, going through the scheme of work, the curriculum, you know, understanding what they need to know, even before class, you know, commenced. So these are the things they need to know, then experience curriculum continuity, because we have structured our curriculum in a way that it continues from the primary to the secondary. It just you know, a, a little bit difference, okay? Now, for example, when it comes to mathematics, some of the previous knowledge they had in mathematics is being built on to ensure that their learning of maths continues, okay? So we don't just bring in new topic. We, we go through the previous knowledge to help them develop the, the necessary skills, you know, to get better in, in that subject. All right, so areas by which children can begin to prepare themselves and parents' contribution. You know, the first one is time management, which is with individual and independent schedules, okay? Time management is very key. So there must be an allo a lot of time, you know, for, for, for these students, you know, to actually learn to, you know, to learn on their own, okay? To develop a, a culture of learning and to also extract what they have learned, okay? To, to apply to real life situations. Then also pay visit to schools, which I've mentioned earlier, and get the child introduced to principals, teachers, possibly prefer the head of resumption. Okay, now that it is even virtual, okay, we are also looking at structuring um, a, a, a kind of a virtual tour for them to familiarize themselves with the school, with the principals, teachers, the curriculum, even their friends. Okay, we, we are looking at bringing one or two students who have passed the, the, that particular um, stage, okay, so that they can ask questions, communicate with them, they can also share their experience with some of this new intake into secondary school. Okay, then encourage relationship building. And that's one of the very important uh, factor when it comes to a you know, proper transition. Because what we do here, we, we look at each of our students trying to understand the peculiarity, the way they learn, the way they understand subjects. Okay, the way they understand different aspects of, of, of the curriculum and see their strengths, see their weaknesses and help them to, to build on those weaknesses to bring out the best out of them. So these are the things we, we, we've been able to structure our curriculum programs and extracurriculum activities, okay? Then also familiarizing children with using technology and encourage random note taking. You know, because of this COVID period, what we are actually, um, you know, doing a kind of a learning that is virtual and we're using some kind of technology Okay, um, Mr. Simon has talked about the, the learning management, uh, management soft, um, softwares that we use, you know, to, to, you know, communicate knowledge to some of our students, okay, like Microsoft Teams, you know, uh, Dynamics, you know, and the rest. So these are ways we, you know, try to show them how they can familiarize themselves with technology, how to use them for their own advantage. We have so many apps that can aid their, you know, they are thinking, their creativity and innovations. Also, the, the, the God factor is very important because in global, which is a, a Christian school, okay, we, we, everything we do is, you know, um, engineered by God. So there is a program that is developed for or structured for our students, which is an alpha program. An alpha leadership program is a program to help develop their spirituality because everything we are doing in life is spiritual. You know, so bringing their skills into scene, their innovation, their ideas actually need God's factor. Okay, so 
we have all of this in place to make sure that they, they excel in everything they are doing. Okay, the horse is prepared for the battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, Shagun, thank you so much. That was really good. Um, we, you know, global, before we go on to the final one in a couple of uh, minutes, uh, Mr. Muiwa, can you tell us a bit, I think we've talked a lot about transition and moving from primary to secondary. Um, and I know you've, you've had to manage a lot of our young people. In fact, right now you're getting ready to receive some of them back for the Becca exam, which will be coming up, I hear, in a couple of weeks. You know, um, can you tell us about you know this this workload a bit about the academic aspect and the kind of exams that students will have to be prepared for? You know, what's the goal? What are the exams? You know, and then also you know, looking at the academic tracking. You know, what do we do in terms of tracking students? You know, what are the things we put in place? to ensure we are definitely on top of their progression. They come in while they're here and, you know, just going on to their IGCSEs or going on to their wife. Wait, wait, let's come. Let's speak to us. Okay, um, thank you so much, Mr. Sime. Thank you for having me to, the, uh, to this platform. I'm so, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, firstly, uh, talking about our, our new, our new uh, students coming in into uh, global. Now, um, the first thing that we normally do for them, as they resume newly into global, a baseline assessment is carried out. That's the first thing that we normally do for them. A baseline assessment is carried out on every one of them. And the essence of these um, of this baseline assessment is to measure the, uh, you know, the academic knowledge of a student to ensure we can track improvement. And that's one of the, uh, the best way uh, to, mon to monitor, to see the areas uh, where the students are having challenges with. And after that, after this baseline assessment, then we now move on to, okay, looking at uh, the performance of the students in the baseline assessment, looking at their performance now, now, looking at their performance, if we now have students that uh, maybe they didn't meet up the, the cutoff or the, the, the school expectation in terms of the score, then there is a need for us to now look at uh, how can we now, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, put them through in order to, for us to be able to, uh, uh, you know, address their needs in terms of their performance now. Now, uh, I want to encourage our parents, our new parents, that if you have your, if you have your children at home and you want them to, uh, to be well grounded in terms of content, uh, now we have, uh, what is going on in our school now is uh, remedial classes. So we have remedial classes going on now and also the summer camp. So we have the summer camp, we have these remedial classes and the essence of this remedial class is to address you know, the needs of these students in terms of their performance. So if they perform below ex expectation, then we now move them to, uh, to, the, our, to our remedial classes so that the teachers can now address uh, some of these challenges. Because if we don't do that, it's going to affect their performance by the time they get, by, by the time they get to uh, their final year, uh, the final year where they're going to be writing a checkpoint exam, uh, where they're going to be writing the Becker exam, uh, IGCS exam, and so on and so forth. So it's very important for us to build their foundation. And that's the essence of, you know, introducing these uh, baseline assessments for our students. So I want to encourage our parents at home that it is, you know, it, now that we have our school now, is now fully online. It's fully online, operating online. So the baseline assessment can be conducted online. The midterm test can be conducted online. So everything is fully online. So you, your children, you can, you can bring your children uh, to our school so that, you, you know, for us to be able to see uh, the teachers can be able to you know address their challenges so uh that is one uh one of the things that we do and also in terms of tracking tracking of students uh we've been doing that for a while for and it's ongoing now it's a continuous thing that we do in global international secondary school we do tracking uh, we do track our students our uh, progress once every two weeks uh, for year seven now for year seven and eight we do that on tuesday and for, um, for year nine and 10, that's, uh, we do that on Wednesday for them. 
and uh, uh, year 11 and 12, that's, uh, their tracking is done on, uh, on Friday for every two weeks. So uh, it's, it's a way why we do this in global is for us to monitor their progress, to monitor their progress so that they can, you know, they can perform very well, excellently well in terms of their external exams, in terms of external exam, talking about our checkpoint exam, uh, they're going to be writing that in, in year nine. By the time they get to year nine, they're going to be writing the checkpoint exam in year nine. They're going to be writing Becker exam, which is the junior wide examination in year nine also. So by the time they get to year 11, that's where, uh, where they're going to be writing their IGCSE exam, the CIE exam. And this is a center. We have a center in our school here. So they don't, there is only for them to go to other centers to write this exam. So our, our school is fully registered. So we, we encourage our students, our parents rather, to bring their children here. So it's a, it, Global has done a lot in terms, of, in terms of assessing our students academically. Thank you so much. For Thank you that. so much, um, Mwewa. Thank you so much for that. And that's so important because um, in terms of uh, baseline, like I had said, a lot of students come in from primary school and some of them haven't done um, yeah, uh, um, yeah, primary six. Some haven't done primary six. Some haven't done fundamental things in primary six. So they now come and they join us in year seven or GSS one. And it becomes a challenge. So that baseline, if we do a baseline, we, we're, we're looking at doing a program, if a, if a parent, um, if the parents apply and all of that. We're looking at doing a program in a couple of weeks that we will do a remedial, like Mwiwa has said. We look at the baseline and say, okay, where is this young person in math, in English, in sciences, and some other subjects? And that gives us that two weeks in advance before school starts. That's part of the transition. A lot of parents don't understand that the bulk of work that is going on in secondary school is so bewildering for children. So during the summer, they must ensure they're going for remedial. Let them get used to the talk work. Let them get used to online, particularly online now. Jojo and some of the software they're using in primary school is not the same for secondary. So if they are eased into it in a time that, you know, is so quiet, we are not doing much, it's a remedial, blah, 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 they get accustomed to it. And one of the things we're doing is to make sure our present year seven students are also on the platform with them to just give them some comfort, to assure them, to, to let them know that it is well. I went through this. I had to go online in March, and I'm so conversant. So we have that body system that they can have them boarding them online. You see, online, anything is possible. More things are possible online. So they can body them, they can make them comfortable, and they can start learning even virtually. And if we do come back to school, they will meet. So that eases their um, coming into secondary school. And that's why we wanted to talk about this today, to say that we must be conversant that these young people psychologically, emotionally, socially, must be allowed to have a gentle language when they're coming in. They must be aware of the environment that they're going to be working in. They must be eased into it. And our teachers are here. They've been doing a wonderful job working with them, calling them up, phoning them, chatting with them, and talking to them, you know. So finally, we come to the last um, panelist that is going to be speaking to us. One of the important things, like I said earlier, is that the virtual environment, what we, Global did, when we went online, one of the things we did first was, because it was sudden, it was boom, like that. But luckily, we have a software that we've been using called Cognitive. We have been using it for IGCSE. It's, it's a Swedish company that I met in Ghana that introduced us to the software. So we've been using the software for the last two or three years. And it has intelligent books. So our students have been using it for IGCSE. Then we also had Edvis, a software, which also we were using to manage a lot of things that we were doing. So our students had been used to the environment. So when they asked us to go online, it was very easy to go online. But what we discovered is that because Edvis is here, Cognitive is here, um, Edmodo is here, it was too confusing. What's up? In the morning, I'll wake up like this to go into classroom. I will see 300 messages on WhatsApp. I say, oh, and parents are saying, please, please help us, please help us. Hey, this children will not kill us. Please, please, just 
tell Damien to please go and connect them and directly and tell them. So, of course, we now realize that um, at the end of that second term, we needed to ensure we had a unified platform. Everything has to be on that same platform. We cannot be this one here, that one here, this one running, you know. So that's why we have this global online learning platform and it's www.globalonline.com. And the, um, our registrar, Dami, who has been behind the technical aspect, who has been doing a lot of training for parents, even parents will call Dami. He has to take them through. And the important and the interesting thing also is he will tell you about the fact that we also have a partner who we are working with has already done some agreements with MTN and Airtel that is going to give them reduced, give us reduced data use. We complained and complained and complained and said, look, our parents are having to spend so much money on data. Our teachers are spending so much money. So on this platform, we have reduced at least by 60%. So Dami, um, over to you. Tell us a bit about, take us on a tour of the global online learning platform and you know, for our participants, our parents to see how mm. it is, what the environment is like. Thank you so much. Okay. Um... Good evening, everyone. Um, a lot has been said already about the future of work and um, how, uh, what I'm just going to do um, in the next few slides is to take us through a virtuous um, uh, tour of our learning platform and how we provide this value to a student. I know if I ask a lot of parents or participants here, the main reason why we educate our children is not just um, it's not just the education they get, but the values, the skills that they get to enable them to relate to the society, to solution providers. And um, in the next couple of few slides, I'm going to be showing us how we deliver this value at Global um, Online. Um, now, as, as, as already been said or mentioned um, if, um, earlier, we, uh, we partnered with um, Dynamis and we make use of a Microsoft Cloud um, Dynamics LP365. Now, the interesting thing about this um, platform is um, it comes with the latest Office 365 technology. And this is user friendly. It has a user friendly interface and it allows for a perfect blend of both the traditional modern brick and the virtual experience. And what this enables for students, I remember Mr. Smith mentioned earlier that when we carried out a survey with students, they also wanted to have a feel of what the traditional system is, which is interaction with teachers. And what this platform does is it allows us to be able to connect with the students, for students to be able to connect with themselves, with their teachers, and also learn at their own pace. And um, now, talking about some of the features or, uh, um, and then how this connects to the skills, the digital skills that students are able to develop while working with us, um, you know, with a platform, um, I'm just going to mention now. Let's, uh, I'm going to be telling you some of the features that comes with this, um, um, with this platform. However, um, like I mentioned earlier, we, uh, once, students are, um, once students are engaged on our platforms, these are some of the um, Microsoft access they have. They have access to Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, and these are the latest um, versions of it. And they can work with the latest tools. And this enables them to develop the skills they need, um, especially basic digital skills they need to be able to function in this, in this present reality. Now, um, Mr. Osimhen mentioned about the offer um, um, in terms of the partnership with a provider. Um, they've been able to strike a partnership with Airtel and MCN, which means that when you subscribe to a platform, you have 50% discount on every data you purchase. And this is very interesting because what we, we also try to do um, in um, not just bringing together all the um, you know features together in one place, we've also made sure that the platform we use uses in our, our provider. I've also partnered with Airtel and MCN to be able to reduce the cost of data for our parents and for our students as well. So moving on, I'm just going to tell, um, show us now. Um, a lot of, has already been said about this blended learning approach, so I'm not going to draw much of this. But the importance of this, um, what I would just like to mention about this is the fact that um, 
this allows for individualized learning approach, which means that students have, access, um, um, have the opportunity to engage with the teachers online directly whenever they need um, assistance or guidance. At the same time, they have all the materials and all the resources they have they need online to be able to engage in um, learning at their own pace, which means you don't have to learn at the same pace as the next person in your classroom. You, you, you learn according to your own pace. Now, I'm just going to be showing us some of the unique features of our learning management system. And this is interesting because um, um, what, what we try to do to provide to our parents and our students is value added service. We want to make sure that we're, it's not just a question of how much you pay, but a question of how much value you're getting from, uh, um, from you know, interacting with a platform or from you know, enrolling at global uh, secondary school. And here are some of the features that you are going to have access to um, when you subscribe to a platform. One of them is, um, you know, virtual classes, and we've mentioned it, you know, a couple of times since the beginning of this um, um, webinar. Um, students attend live virtual interactive sessions with learning instructors. And I use learning instructors because in this um, era, teachers have moved between, uh, um, from just dishing out instructions, but to the role of facilitators or guiders. So what they do is they guide students and then students lead their own learning, where our teachers are there online, you know, live and direct to be able to engage and interact with students. Also, we have real-time discussion and chat with platform. Now, what this enables is it enables students to be able to chat or interact with their classmates or with their teachers, not only during uh, class hours, but at any time, maybe when they're having their independent studies, they can just leave a message for their teacher uh, if they have any challenges or any issue. Another, th uh, another feature is the fact that they have access to unlimited um, online resources. Now, these online resources are, um, they're quite, rather than having a student go to a physical library and then have to search through catalogs, they have access to thousands of resources, relevant materials that they can just, you know, access at their own time and then it's there for them. And then um, Sergio Shiro have said um, a lot about, you know, robotics and STEM, and then we also offer this through our platform. Um, um, you know, um, Outlook email and what this does is allows it gives um you know um a student this email is actually integrated to every part of the learning system which means they can use it for personal use or also for interaction in the classroom also we engage in a lot of team building exercises and activities and um then on the internet. Uh, we have put in place, you know, online safety uh, procedures uh, and to be able to uh, them from uh, hackers, from, uh, internet bullies and all of that. We also try to engage as well to people things on how to, you know, put up um, guidance on it. I'm going to move it to now, we mentioned uh, Lala, you might want to pop off your video. You are breaking. Okay, sir. And the um, screen is not clear. It looks like we have lost him. It's not on. I think he has an internet. Please, um, please, um, for our parents, participants, please, if you have any questions, please help us by putting it on the Q&A. That was basically the last, I'm sure he's trying to rejoin us. Um, um, okay, I think he's back. Are you back? Bamilana? I'm back. Yeah, so sorry about okay. that. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to quickly finish up. Mm -hmm. 
So like I said um, earlier, I said that what we have tried to do, I don't know if my um, screen sharing is a bit brighter now. Much better now. Okay, great. So like I said earlier, we've um, said a lot about a blended learning approach, whereas our, you know, our lessons are pre-recorded and there's, um, you know, all the materials and its resources that students need are online. And then at the same time, they also have access to live teacher interaction. Now, what you see on the screen right now are some of the pre-recorded videos. What our, our teachers have done is to you know, record their lessons, which are, are going to be on the platform, and not just the video as well, so the materials, the class notes, the you know schemes and curriculum. So everything is all there. On it. So it's it's all encompassing. So so that students can meet with teachers in um, live, and at the same time also have uh, you know go at their own pace and then check out the videos and check out the materials online to, um, you know, to catch up. Now, what I'm going to do last, um, this is my last um, slide. I just want to share with us some of the um, testimonials and feedback we've got. Like I said, um, in this new dispensation, it was a bit, you know, um, uh, challenging for parents and for our students when we started, because it's a shock to everybody that we had to move like within um, just uh, a week from, Motor and break to online, but between then and now, these are some of the feedback we've been able to get. And I'm going to play. Uh, so um, I want I want to hear some of our students share their experience, you know, with the online. Hello. 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 You can't hear. You can't hear me. No, we can't hear the videos. Okay, okay. Um, let me quickly share my audio. Okay. Hello, everyone. Is it better now? Yes, we can. We can my name that. is Adana Eze. Hello, everyone. My name is Gabriel Ejikeme. Hello, my name is Amanda Tabansi. Hello, my name is Isiamai Kijiba. And I'm a student at Global International College. Overall, my experience at Global has been amazing. Online learning is a new experience for me. The resources provided to us online are adequate and I've had no problems accessing them. They have this um, program where they like line you with your location of university. Like for example, let's say you're applying to go to the US. So there's a class for US university students who are going to go to the US. In my opinion, the best aspect of Global International College is its community. Um, for me, my best part of Global is actually the teachers. They were actually very nice. Not only does GIS really help your academic life, they also, they also try to help your personal life, and of course, your spiritual life as well. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm also going to share some of the... Um... My name is Modupe Ejikeme. Uh, my name is Dr. Mwadiuto Iyakamwa. My name is Stephen Moga. My name is Tinu Saya. My name is Mrs. Adam. It's gone off. Are you done? You are not able to play. Okay. Nami Lola. Thank you. Okay. I think we lost him again there. So thank you so much, uh, Damilala. Um, we were going to show a video about the uh, parents' thoughts on the online, just to give you an idea of what parents thought. Are you back? My name is Modupa Ejikeme. Oh. My name is My name is Mrs. Adonke. Following the global pandemic, the school has had to incorporate online learning classes to keep the children engaged. I, I never knew that the course content can be quite uh, uh, rich. Uh, the children are very busy, hardly see them till break time. It's been a very rewarding experience using the resources of Global International College to get him admission. Global was very fast to smoothing the online classroom. 
and make learning easy and flexible. The online classes made my daughter more responsible for her actions towards her education. And uh, I like the way the teachers are hands-on on the online. In fact, if they see Was achieved. As a parent, I have observed several improvements and benefits in and to my child that were not present in the traditional classes. They've been able to give very good student-guided mentoring for him to achieve his best levels of excellence in study. My name is Modupa Ejikeme. Um, okay, thank you, everyone. Thank um, you so, so much. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. You want to finish up? Yes. So um, the most important, um, you know, area, um, I mean, what is most important about a platform is um, it's not, it, it, it looks at every aspect, not just the academic, the spiritual, and even uh, we also look at, um, you know, relevance to, you know, um, the, the workspace. So we try to, as much as possible to subscribe to a platform that allows a student to, you know, gain a lot of technical skills and also soft skills. Some of them have been mentioned in terms of, you know, critical thinking, creative thinking and problem solving. At the same time, they also learn some technical skills like digital skills by interacting with the platform. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for that, Damilola. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to our, our um, panelists. Um, thank you for all the information that has been given today. I think it's really um, a lot that has been done. And so I have not seen any questions. So I'm going to take it that um, our participants, some of our parents who, uh, who are here, some of them have left, I guess, that's about one and a half hours. So I would just like to thank everybody who wants more. And please, please, we have posted our details. You can visit the website www.globalcollegeonline.com to check out the courses that we have and the platform that we have. We are, of course, doing entrance exams. So once you go in there and you click, you can click for an entrance exam. It's an assessment, really, not a big deal. You know, so for most um, students who are joining us, we just want to know the baseline, to know where they are, you know, and all of that. And please tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your parents as well. Because I've seen my friend Priscilla, she's here. So please help us to pass on the information to them so that we can definitely have them enrolling with us with the, for this kind of wonderful, wonderful experience. Thank you, our parents, our participants. Thank you, our panelists. Uh, Mrs. Ted Joshua, thank you so much. Thank you, Muiwa uh, Ebun Shegun. And thank you, Dami Lola. And um, I know that also Rafael is somewhere. Rafa was also part of this. I think it was somewhere, somewhere in the thing. Thank you so much for all the work that you guys have done. You've done a brilliant, brilliant job. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.